We're recording now. I apologize. I had some um, issues with the speakers. Can I just have a minute? Sure. Yeah. I hope everybody is able to see my screen. All right. Um, yes. What's that? Okay. Um, okay. So, um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Pragya Bandari. I am a PhD student uh, here at UMBC studying computer science. Uh, Today's talk is based off a research that um, I did uh, using the tool CPSA to analyze the protocol TLS143. Um, the basic thing that we wanted to find out uh, in this research was if CPSA was able to identify this attack called a selfie attack in TLS 1.3, and it did. And we were also able to uh, propose uh, to to fixes for this particular attack. So let's try to find out more about this. So in today's talk, I would start with the significant findings of our research and then move on to what motivated us to go along with this research. Uh, some of the previous work that's already done in case of formal analysis of TLS 1.3, which is quite a lot of work. Um, then we will discuss about the TLS 1.3 protocol in itself, how it exactly works. Um, we'll talk about the selfie attack um, and we'll talk a little bit about the model CPSA and then also how um, we modeled uh, our protocol, the TLS 1.3 protocol, using the tool CPSA, and uh, discuss our analysis based off the output shapes that the tool produced, and of course, ended with the conclusion. So let's move on to the significant findings of the protocol. Um, so the first thing um, that we wanted to see was if CPSA could identify the selfie attack, and it did. Um, we propose two fixes for the attack. One is where we add the server identity along with the pre-shared key, which I will be referring to as PSK. Um, and the other uh, method that we, uh, the other fix that we introduced was that every client and server pair should have a unique uh, pre-shared key. Um, can understand this a little bit in the upcoming slides. Uh, we also demonstrated that uh, it you uh, the impersonation attack was not prevented in the post handshake authentic authentication of the TLS 4.3. So um, let's just dive in to the motivation of our research. So TLS 1.3 is one of those protocols that received a lot of attention uh, in terms of formal verification when it was being standardized. Um, IETF took a lot of efforts in uh, making sure that all the security proofs and all the theorems are covered and that there are no security flaws as such in TLS 1.3. Um, they made uses of uh, symbolic model, computational models. Um, in fact, the whole protocol was designed alongside security proofs. And yet in 2018, um, two authors, Nick Drucker and Shay Duron, found an attack which they named as the selfie attack. Selfie attack is essentially a type of reflection attack, uh, but it was interesting that they yet found this attack um, in spite of all the efforts that IETF took uh, to make sure that no attack uh, should be found for this particular protocol. So the main question that uh, we wanted to answer in this research was, will CPSA be able to find this particular attack? And how is it any different? How is CPSA different? Is that CPSA will enumerate all the possible executions of a protocol if you give it a set of assumptions. Unlike other tools where um, you need to know the theorems or the proofs that you want to prove along with, 
uh, uh, for that particular protocol. If you want to find an attack, then probably prove it through a theorem. But in case of CPSA, you don't really need that. You just give it a set of assumptions and then it enumerates all possible execution. So CPSA should be able to find this attack. And hence, we went forward with this uh, uh, particular research. So talking about the previous work, as I mentioned, a lot of tools were involved in this. Um, some of the uh, tools use symbolic model and some of the tools use computational model to uh, verify uh, the uh, uh, protocol. Um, the main reason that these tools were not able to find this attack called the selfie attack was because of the assumptions that they made. So in case of symbolic models, which uh, the tools Tamarin and Prove refuse, they made an assumption that if a mutual authentication is done between two parties using a PSK, which is a pre-shared key, then if the mutual, uh, then the server to client to server mutual authentication or client to client mutual authentication is correct as long as they use PSK. So that was one of the assumptions they made. Now, in this case, what happens is that client to server is good, but it, when it comes to client to client, client is basically talking to itself, which is not good. So that was one of the assumptions that they, uh, because of which they couldn't find the selfie attack. When it comes to computational model, the assumption that they made was that only one client and one server will have one PSK. Now, this is essentially not a wrong assumption, except that this assumption is not written in the specification. So they unknowingly assumed something that wasn't there, and hence they were not able to find the uh, selfie attack. So now let's try to understand this TLS 1.3 protocol. So for the TLS 1.3 protocol, we have two parties, as you can see in this uh, image on the screen. We have the client role and then we have the server role. So uh, this is a simple handshake and how they attain mutual authentication. Client sends a client hello along with a pre-shared key. A client hello is nothing but um, you know just a maybe a hello text message and client will send a, a uniquely originated um, nouns along with the client hello. And then there's pre-shared key, of course. Um, you may say, what is key share? Um, one thing we need to note when we are working with CPSA is that we go with minimum assumptions. So, uh, so the asterisks are anything that's uh, that, that shows up an asterisk is basically an optional message in the sense that even if that message isn't there in, uh, in our model, the protocol will still complete. So we kind of need to know that. Anyway, so the client sends the client hello message and the pre-shared key to the server. The server will receive that message and it will send its own server hello and a pre-shared key. Um, again, the server hello will include a nouns from the server side and then the pre-shared key, of course, and then it will also include a finished message, which is nothing but the hash of all the previous messages that have been sent in that particular session. So that will include a hash of the client hello and the server hello. Once the server sends that message, the client will receive it and then it will send its own finished message, which is again a hash of all the previous messages. And then the, once the authentication is established, they start uh, exchanging application data. Now that I've mentioned pre-shared key here, there are two ways of establishing this pre-shared key. One is out of band or externally. So in this case, what happens is that the client and the server have already agreed upon a shared key and uh, they, they are going to use that for this particular session. And the other way of establishing a PSK uh, is via a previous connection. So maybe a client and a server had a previous connection where they agreed upon a key that they're going to be using as a pre-shared key. So in our research, we are mostly focused on PSK that was established externally uh, because this attack called the selfie attack was actually found in this particular case. So let's move on to understanding what this selfie attack is all about. So as you can see the image on the screen here, we have Alice, who is the client, and we have Bob, who is supposed to be the server. Um, Alice, as you know, sends the first message of a client hello along with the pre-shared key. 
Um, now what happens is that E, who is an adversary, will take that message, will receive that message, and it will just reflect it back to Alice itself. Now, Alice acts like a server, accepts that message from E, which is a client hello and pre-shared key. And then as a server, it sends back a response for server hello and just the server finished message. Eve then sends back the same message to Alice and Alice now acts as a client and sends back the client finished message. And then Eve again sends back the client finished message. As you can see over here, Eve is successful in making Alice talk to herself. So it's type of a reflection attack, which the authors named it as the selfie attack. Basically, Alice is talking to itself and not the server. So let's move on to um, talking about the tool that we used for our research, uh, which is a cryptographic protocol shapes analyzer, abbreviated as CPSA. So a little bit background about CPSA, it's developed by MITRE, it's um, written in Haskell, and it follows a strand space theory uh, when it comes to producing shapes. And it also um, analyzes using the Dolovial network intruder model, which basically gives the structural falls of a, uh, flaws of a, a protocol. So in the upcoming slides, we when we analyze our um, you know, the output, which is in the, in a form of shapes, uh, we probably need a little bit knowledge about how to read these shapes. So here is a simple example that I just took from the CPSA manual. Um, it basically explains, uh, I'm just gonna talk about how you can analyze a CPSA shape. So if you look at the shape on, on your screen, you can see there are two roles. One is the init role and the other one is the responder role. Uh, the init role has a black dot. A black dot signifies that a message is sent as it's supposed to. It, it, it's, it's sending a message. And a blue dot signifies that the message is being received completely as it is. A solid line between the black and the blue dot also signifies that the message was sent and received as it is. There was no modification done whatsoever for that message. A dotted line shows that some kind of modification might have been done from the message sent to uh, the message received. Basically, the message sent and the message received are not the same. So that could be our analysis. And in case of a red dot, it means that the protocol did not complete it. Since CPSA could not complete that run of the protocol of that execution, a red dot basically signifies that. So with that, um, we found some limitations with CPSA as well. Like um, it's a little hard uh, to, it's a little challenging actually to model encryption and hashing analysis in case of uh, CPSA and also certain mathematical operations such as XOR is a little challenging to actually model using CPSA. So let's move on to our protocol TLS 1.3 and how we exactly modeled it using CPSA. So on the right hand side, there is this image that I've already discussed about in the previous slide. It's basically the specification uh, of the TLS 1.3 protocol, a simple handshake, of course. Um, and we're going to compare this with our modeling, just a snippet of the code that I have on my left hand side. So the first thing that we know that there are two roles, which is the client and the server. And accordingly, I have modeled uh, two def roles here, client and server, as I've highlighted on in blue. Now, the client and the server also have something called as a pre-shared key. And as I mentioned earlier, pre-shared key was established externally. That is, uh, client and the server have already agreed upon this PSK. So how do we model that with CPSA? So in order to do that, um, we introduced another def role called the key share. Now, the key share role would just initialize a PSK. Uh, PSK is nothing but the pre shared key, which is of the type symmetry key, as I've highlighted in green out there. Uh, so, we have considered PSK to be a symmetry key with basically a set of assumptions. And then we initialized it with an index, which is necessarily just a text. Um, 
And now how is it shared between the client and the server? How do we model that? So we are going to add some observe statements where it will just observe that particular PSK from the key share rule. That as I've highlighted in the magenta color here, as you can see that the client and the server have observed that PSK in that form. Now, PSK needs to be only known to the client and the server. So how do we make that assumption and how do we let CPSA know that, hey, only the client and the server are supposed to know this and that the CPSA, uh, sorry, the PSK was established externally. So that we've done by uh, assuming that PSK is... Um, so uh, as I've highlighted in purple there, non-originating PSK means that we are telling CPSA that, hey, only the client and the server uh, know about this PSK. So that's one of the assumptions that we have made. Now, this is just the initial model that we made, exactly how the specification was given for TLS 1.3. So let's check out what the output um, shapes that it actually produced. So on the next slide, we have the output shapes that that initial model gave us uh, from on the left hand side, you have the client's perspective and on the right hand side, you have the server's perspective. So uh, CPS essentially actually produces shapes both from the client's perspective and server's perspective. This is the attempt of CPSA to complete the protocol in both the perspectives. I think that's one of the good things about CPSA. So if you look at these shapes, as a whole, you can see there are black dots, there's a bunch of blue dots, and you, they're all solid lines, which essentially, which essentially tells us that, yep, the protocol runs fine. And this also verifies that the client and the server probably need to have the PSK in order to complete the protocol. But one thing that is that we observe in this analysis is that does the client know exactly who it's talking to? Like the server could be the client itself because the only condition we have over here is that the client and the server need to know what the PSK is. And so the client could be talking to itself because it knows the PSK and there is no way to verify that. Now, these shapes might look a little ambiguous and not really maybe it's a little difficult to analyze that. So to make that a little simpler and to explicitly show the self attack, what we did was we introduced two, uh, so we did another modeling with identities. So the first model, like we showed, that was the implicit initial model um, that we just uh, saw the output shapes for. So what we, we made was we explicitly mentioned the bi-directional nature of a key. Basically, we we introduced identities for the keys. So I've highlighted here in magenta color here, you can see the changes we made for the key share role. So in case of the second model, uh, we introduced keys from A to B and B to A, basically letting CPSA know that, hey, this key is bi-directional. So run this uh, uh, model considering that there are two keys from A to B and then B to A. Basically, the key is bidirectional. So what shapes did we get uh, with respect to this model? So when, so when we ran this model, we got four shapes of interest. So these are the two shapes that we found again. If you just look at these shapes, you would think that, okay, everything looks fine, but let's just <laughs> focus on the depth skeleton of these two shapes here. So let's focus on the left hand side uh, shape and the image. So in the depth skeleton, if you can observe the depth strand client, uh, thinks A is talking to B and B is talking to A, that's good. And so does the server A is talking to B and B is talking to A and we don't see anything wrong with that. So that's that's good. Uh, there doesn't look uh, it doesn't look like there's a selfie attack out there. Same thing on the right hand side image as well. We can see A is talking to A, B is talking to B and the server kind of agrees with that. A is talking to A, B is talking to B. So there is no selfie attack uh, in this case. But the other two shapes that CPSU produced for us if you can look at these shapes, you can see that something is wrong. It's not exactly how it's supposed to look like. So when we 
uh, go deep into the uh, analyzing the depth skeleton of the shapes, we can observe that the depth strand climb says A is talking to B and B to A is the key, but the server says A is talking to A and B is talking to B, which essentially means that <laughs> the client is talking to itself. Even in the case of the right hand side shape, if you can observe, um, we have client uh, A is talking to A and B is talking to B, but the server says is A to B and B to A. Those are um, two different keys. Basically, the client is talking to itself. So there is a selfie attack in this case. So here we've explicitly shown that the selfie attack does exist uh, in the TLS1 void view protocol. So we also uh, in proposed two fixes to fix this particular attack. Uh, one of the fix that we have uh, proposed is we include the server identity along with the PSK. So server identity in the sense that, uh, as you know, in our model, we have considered A to be the client and B to be the server. So what we said was, uh, the server uh, B, the server name, we just included that along with the server hello message so that client knows who the server is. So just including the identity of the server along uh, in during the handshake so that client can make sure who the server is. And once we uh, modeled that fix and we ran our model, uh, we got these shapes which clearly shows us the client and the server uh, seem to know who they're talking to and it's all fine. There's no selfie attack. So this fix does work. Um, and so when it comes to uh, including the server identity along with PSK, this can be done two ways. One is during the handshake and one is post handshake which means after the handshake or mutual authentication is done, we just add two more steps where the client would request for a certificate from the server and the server would send a certificate response back to client so that the client knows who it's talking to. Uh, but in this case, when we modeled this, uh, as you can see over here um, in, in this shape, we can see that something is off and when we look at the depth skeleton, we can see that one of the client actually completed the mutual authentication with the server, but the client is, there's another client on the right hand side, which is actually talking to the server. So basically the client is talking to itself. Now, if this was, if this is not clear, so we kind of uh, modeled another uh, model where we just explicitly introduced another default client that, um, um, you know, we just introduced another, uh, uh, another client to our model and just to see what shape it gives us. And the next slide actually shows us that shape. So here we can clearly see that the, if you focus on the depth skeleton, which I've highlighted in red, A is talking to B naught and B is talking to B, basically. And the other client, same thing goes uh, with the other client, A is talking to A, B is talking to B. And then there's another client where A is talking to B naught again, which, so all of this actually suggests to us that the client is actually just talking to itself. So there's clearly a selfie attack. So this way, We've shown that if you include the server identity post handshake, that doesn't really uh, fix this problem. So if you do want to include the server identity, then it should be included during the handshake. The next fix that we proposed was to have a unique PSK for every client and server pair, basically just have one single PSK make it unidirectional basically. And when we modeled that, we observed that there is no selfie attack. We've got this one shape, which uh, basically suggests that there's no selfie attack. So in conclusion, what we found out was that the other tools were not able to find the selfie attack, mainly because when the ITF was standardizing this particular protocol, uh, 
they were more maybe they were more focused on other uh, attacks such as a log jam or a smack attack and also this reflection attack was not really seen in tls 1.2 or so maybe one of the reasons why they did not even look at the reflection attack and these tools are probably not comprehensive enough to actually find these attacks but in case of CPSA, since it enumerates all the classes of executions of the protocol, um, it was able to find the selfie attack. And we also proposed two mitigations for uh, this particular problem. Uh, one was with uh, PSK with the server identity, and the other one was uh, where you include a unique PSK per client server pair, and we also have shapes uh, that kind of verify that the proposed mitigations do work. So this was about the research and now I'm open to any questions. Um if I may ask a question. Yeah, sure. Um so we were doing a lot of the uh, the graphs and whatnot, and I come from more of a math background. Um, are there any kind of um, applications to like group theory, not group, sorry, graph theory um, that you found in uh, the protocol analysis with the graphs? Maybe some of the uh, the exploits or some of the um, connections from client to client can be explicitly found a priori some mathematical theorem. Um, so as far, as far as my knowledge goes, yes, definitely. I think you could prove that using a mathematical theorem, except, uh, so the other tools actually that, uh, like Tamarin and Proverif, uh, run based on these mathematical theorems. So they basically try to prove if a particular, uh, security flaw exists or not using these theorems. So, yes, there should be a theorem to prove the reflection attack as well. Um, but they, they obviously had not written this. Does that answer your question? I, I actually don't understand your question. Um, to, you, you need a tool like CPSA to generate the graphs from which you can analyze the attack. Yeah, I, I was just wondering if there was a way in graph theory that you could model these and, you know, uh, use like some type of graph theory type theorem to figure out whether there's a uh, client to client connection uh, before even having to compute these things. Does that make sense? Well, actually, these things are compute. The graphs are drawn from the uh, analysis, which is a set of theorems. Uh, we refer to them as the uh, authentication tests that actually go through and verify that certain properties occur for for different messages, and they build the messages based on these theories that are in the strand space. And then the graphs are drawn from those just to from the output, just to make it easier to to see what the possibilities are. So there's an underlying theory, mathematical theory, and and theorems and that are applied to the actual protocol models, and then those are graphed. The results are graphed because it's easier to read those than it is to to read through all of the uh, output. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. Um. Prashna, what are your plans for future research and and can you describe what you'll be doing for your dissertation? Um, well, um, I am still to decide a little bit about the uh, dissertation. I don't really have a clear idea, so I don't think I, it would be appropriate for me to give an answer right now. Um, future research with respect to the TLS 1.3 protocol, is it? Um, I think there is an aspect of uh, the TLS 1.3 that we haven't really modeled, which uses the DH, uh, sorry, the Defi Hellman uh, algorithm as well in one of the other resumption model of TLS 1.3. I think that would be somewhere I would be headed if I have to pursue yep, TLS 1.3 research. Um, what have you learned? Um 
about protocol analysis and CPSA through this work? So, I think about protocol analysis, one lesson that I definitely learned with this research is that um, spite of having so much of formal verification of these uh, uh, protocols, there's no guarantee that you would cover all of the security flaws. So it is very important that you formally verify all of the protocols uh, before you standardize it. And um, I think CPSA, because it actually enumerates all the possibilities, it's, it's a little, probably a little hard to analyze the shapes because you need to know what you're looking at, uh, but it definitely does show how a protocol works and yeah. Branya, uh, Richard had yes. a question in the chat. He wanted to know how you could use this attack. And I think you could uh, use the slide with the two clients in the server, because essentially one of the clients is masquerading as a different client to the server. Yep. Yeah, so, so do you want me to explain or do you want to explain? <laughs> Yeah, I guess uh, if you want to explain, I guess. Yeah. Okay. So, so essentially what's happening here is that you notice that the server completes the, the real protocol with client B, the first, the top part, the B zero client is attempting to, to communicate and has sent out a message and you notice the messages he sent aren't going anywhere. So essentially when those are sent out, I could steal the nonce that that client okay had taken and use it in my messages because at the end, what I can do is then when the, the bottom two messages, the last two, two messages, when those are exchanged, what I can do is let the other client exchange those messages with him. So that's when I've authenticated, that's the actual authentication of the parties where we identify who we are. And at that point, even though I'm the one that, that completed the, connection with the server, what I'm doing is using another client. So I'm masquerading as a different client. So, so client B ends up masquerading as client B zero. So in an environment where multiple people are using, say a net key, where everybody has the key, then it is possible for, for people to masquerade as others within that, that network. By the way, um, we invite um, anybody who wants to join our lab. Uh, if you're interested in learning how to do protocol analysis, you know, get in contact with me. Uh, we run, our, my PhD student, Enes Goloszewski, runs a very nice workshop in how to use CPSA. And uh, we welcome new members. Um, it, it's a, a very interesting and important area of cybersecurity. Are there any more questions? Oh, Ennis, I see you're there. Um, uh, are, when is your next round of um, workshops going to be held? I don't have any workshops right now, but pending sort of student interest, I would be willing to run some this semester. Okay, well, well, thank you very much for an interesting talk, and uh, we'll be back here in two weeks. Um, stay tuned. Bye. Thank you, everybody.